been rhyming for a lean amount of time. You know what I mean? I've just been rhyming in it since around nine years old, going to the park jams. Anybody could tell you that's where it started out in the jams. When the MC was there, there wasn't no money involved, there wasn't no lights and cameras, just a bunch of females, a bunch of fellas, beers. The concrete jungle, Brooklyn, Queens Bridge come together. But Nasty Nas is one of the youngest artists out right now who's doing this thing, new artists. It's keeping it live, keeping it real. Two of the greats that ever did it together as a duo. And the whole Queensbridge Master, can I say that? The Street Disciple meets the Visualizer, AZ. It's a blessing. I'm a product of hip hop, you know what I'm saying? I'm a product of, of the old school and the newest of the new. In this mini documentary series, The Illmatic Era. Nasir Jones, born September 14th, 1973, in the borough of Brooklyn. What's interesting is, I always thought Nas was born at Queensbridge. His mother, Fanny Ann Little, was a U.S. Postal Service worker from North Carolina. He also has a brother, Jabari Fred, which his rap name is Jungle which is a member of the hip-hop group, The Bravehearts. His father, Charles Jones III, changed his name to Alu Dora. His father was heavily influenced by jazz music. jazz has uh, definitely was in, embedded into hip hop to me. What sticks out to me, what sticks out to me was the Jungle Brothers. The Jungle Brothers had an album straight out the jungle, straight out the jungle. I guess the, the, the album track straight out the jungle had that was in uh, Straight Outta Jungle. The time I heard jazz and hip hop fused together was through Tribe Called Quest. Three albums, Midnight Marauder and Low End Theory. Um, it was another song by Stetson Sonic, an older group, uh, talking all that jazz, but not too prevalent of using jazz music like uh, Tribe Called Quest, Pete Rock and CO Smooth, and DJ Premier and Google. Since Nas' father understood the theory of music, I think Nas had an advantage, you know, as far as listening to music sonically. And um, I also didn't know that, you know, doing my research, that Nas knew how to play all these instruments, as far as piano, trumpets, drums, whatsoever. And it kind of reminded me of Prince, you know, kind of Prince story, because Prince knew how to play all these instruments. And a lot of people think these rappers are just rappers, but a lot of them are actual musicians. Children of the night. 
What music they make. and his family relocated to Queensbridge Housing in the borough of Queens. His parents divorced in 85. He dropped out of school after the eighth grade. He educated himself about African-American culture through the 5% Nation, a splinter group of the Nation of Islam and the Nubian Nation. In his early years, he played the trumpet and other slew of instruments and began writing his own rhymes, which he perfected, which he mastered. That was a long time ago. A long time ago, I used to write graffiti, all that type of stuff, you know, break dance when I was a little kid, but that stuff got played out, you know what I mean? Now it was just a mic thing. That's the thing that's been standing the strongest and the longest. The freestyle, freestyle is a hip hop thing, but I definitely like to give credit to brothers who sit down and write the lyrics and make it more poetry, you know what I mean? Poetry. Um, poetry goes way back since the cavemen, shamans, and how they used to express it's actually used as a verb for them, so how they express their feelings, um, their ideas, and as a form of entertainment. Um, poetry was, was to use to express a person's feeling, even if it was through uh, vocal or visual art. So, um, you know, and it's still going on from generation to generation right now. You see what I'm saying? Um, you know, poetry is different from, you know, poems. You know, poetry is, is, the, is the idea. And a poem is how you use words to express that idea. So, you know, I don't want to make it too complicated, but, you know, it could be anything from... Uh, uh, a leaf falling out of a tree to the ground and how that, that, that person expresses how he views that leaf falling to the ground. First time I heard about Queens Bridge was through MC Shan. Um, he had a song out called The Bridge. You know, it was, it was hitting real heavy, you know. Then uh, Roxanne Shante and Molly Ma, their whole little movement. Then Mob Deep came out, Nas came out, uh, Cor Cormega came out, um, Tragedy, Gaddafi, and Capone from Capone and Noriega. So that whole 94, you know, couple of years pocket, Queensbridge was running it heavy. Nas recruited his best friend and upstairs neighbor, Willie L. Will Graham, as his personal DJ. Before he got the name Nasty Nas, he was known as Kid Wave. Will was my right hand man since I was since I moved here, you know. So I mean we grew up since right here, just playing around in the hallway, running around all day. Used to be like mad young, just hooking up equipment, the speakers, to this. as soon as the moms go to work, just hooking the speakers up to the amplifier, just transforming all of her stuff around into like a hip hop type of unit instead of a wall unit, a nice little area where she, where she entertained her company. He transformed it into our type of thing, you know what I'm saying? And he was like, you know, like that person that was all about the truth, you know what I'm saying? Just no matter what, you know what I'm saying? One day, this bitch had set him up because she, she, 
you know, some, some stupid shit happened, some real petty shit, you know what I'm saying? So this bitch set him up and um, she got she got her family to come shoot him in the back or some pussy shit. Sadly, Tone the Poet received some bad news. As we was filming this documentary, one of his close friends passed away. So, I, you know, I want to spit this joint. Uh, it's about my man, you know, passed away due to, uh, you know, addiction. So it goes on. Um, yesterday, my man woke up sleep again. His mind was tired from that stress and that strain. That push and that pull, he was comatose and relaxed in his drain, serene. His head was propped on a pillow of temptation. His body was sunk in the mattress of immobilization. He was wrapped tightly in his blanket of lies covering his eyes. Unable to lift his hands up, rise to his feet and stretch his mind. But he heard that voice in him loud like God, like an alarm clock saying, wake up. But like clockwork, he rolled right over, hit that snooze, copped them Z's. As his days went by, that's why he ain't alive. Very treasure. Rest in peace. Anthony Cruz, born March 9th, 1972. Better known by his stage name. AZ, AKA Sosa, AKA The Visualizer. AZ was born in Bedford Stuyvesant, Brooklyn, to an African American mother and a Dominican father. What's interesting again, I had no clue that AZ was half Dominican. He grew up in East New York, Brooklyn with his mother and his sister. AZ started writing rap lyrics when he was 12 years old. He attended Eli Whitney High School with fellow Brooklyn rapper, Jay-Z. Until the vocational school closed down in the late 80s. In the early 1990s, he became friends with Nas, the street disciple a young rapper from Queens. You know, me and him met on the phone through homies, you know what I mean? That, that was uh, like, my man is better than you. You know what I'm saying? And we got tight. And um, I was doing my thing in the street. I just was coming through um, showing support for Nas for his album. And it was the last song and I was in the studio with him. You know, a lot of smoke in the air, you know what I mean? And, and the music playing and I started chanting the, um, the hook I had already. He's like, yo, I like that. I was like, stop playing, you know what I mean? Cause he critically acclaimed, you know, at the time everybody talking about him and I wasn't trying to get on the album. I was just there showing support. He was like, yo, you got something for it? You know what I mean? So I said, yeah, I got, I got a little something, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm like, you, you playing, right? Cause he's like, nah, I guess spit it. I did it and the rest was his. So later on in my, um, my years of, um, you know, just growing up in the culture, I uh, dabbled in doing promotion. And there was a particular album, I think it was AZ's uh, AWOL. It was a dark album, I would say, you know, cause it wasn't really getting a lot of light, but I felt it and it was like, yo, this is crazy. I want to bring them to my, to my, my, my school that I uh, graduated from. So, I just reached out to his management, a uh, brother named Small Change, real cool cat. Um, we kicked it. He was 100%. Um, you know, wasn't no game playing. Um, and uh, we hooked it up and, 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 and it came out. You know, actually, we all flew together because I was living in New York at the time. I was living in Brooklyn at the time. Um, and we, me, AZ, my man, baby, Paul, small change, um, AZ whole crew. We all flew up to Buffalo and, um, he had did a, a dope show. Um, 
that was the AWOL album, but of course he had did his hits, you know, before that as well. I'm going to say yes, definitely AZ is underrated. His bar level, in my opinion, was second to none in his heyday. I love the puns and I love Nas himself. But when you got AZ getting on records and he's saying stuff like, check my track record, the specs in the black Lexus, expect me to act reckless, I'm rich and I'm ass naked on meek with half leopard, my drink and my glass separate. I roll out and have breakfast and scroll through my last message like, these niggas can't be serious. Bro, that right there, the consistency, the fluidity is crazy. So he's definitely one of the most underrated. This is on your album. We know Tip is on there and P-Rock and C.O. Smooth. And I understand you did a little bit of production in there. Uh, that's what I was told. I don't know what the case is, but who, who who's working on the album? That uh, who, who has worked on your album? And who would you like to see work on the next album? My man Q-Tip, Pete Rock, Lost Professor, my man L.E.S. from The Bridge, and my man DJ Premier, you know what I mean, just collaborated to help a brother out, you know what I'm saying, make sure that my words were heard. My rap's a trifle I shoot slugs from my brain just like a rifle Stampede the stage, I leave the microphone split Play Mr. Tuffy while I'm on some pretty tone shit Ver Dedicate Illmatic to my man Illmatic Ice doing time for murder right now because he's a strong man and he made his own rules for the game and he didn't take nothing from nobody and he was kind of like a strong path to follow and look at even though he got caught up and misled into the wrong situation and now he's caught in the system right now. I still dedicated the album to him. When I first seen Nas, if I'm not mistaken, I was with my cousin Key and Brandon, and we was watching the box, and halftime came up. <laughs> For all y'all young people, the box was a, it was called the video jukebox. You, you, you could call up, or you could dial up, call them up, pay to watch the video that you wanted to watch. But for the most part, if you caught them at a certain hour, that time of day or time of night, they was playing all the videos. You just had to stay up to see it. You know what I mean? So when I heard, when I heard, shh, halftime, boom, 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 boom. right, right, nasty dies in your area, about to cause mass hysteria. I'm like, huh? <laughs> Before I puff, I take out my fronts. <laughs> like, what? And then just the grain of the video is just like, yo, that's it. That's it right there, Queensbridge, in the house, once again. Right, 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 right. Yo, when I first heard AZ, I was like, yo, who is this dude? Like, that pattern that he used, yo, he was in the pocket with the, he was in the, he was deep in the pocket. He was, he, yo, he was deep, deep, deep in the pocket. And it was just like, then Nas came after him, but it was like, yo, this is the next superstar. Ain't nobody rhyming like AZ. What he's saying is on point. Everything that he was saying on, was like, for real, real, real. Like, yo. You know what I'm saying? Yo, then what, man? What? what? Visualizing the realism of life and actuality. Fuck who's the baddest? The person's status depends on salary. And my mentality is money orientated. I'm destined to live the dream for all my peeps who never made it. What up, son? Firm biz, baby. Don't hate it, obey it. Here's a little story that must be told. About two players rocking on the ice and gold. They try to slow us down mm. from laying the law. Well, we kept it real, we just playing it raw. Pushed up on our ladies, spoke on our names. But real cats never get caught uh -uh. in the game. Play a hater.
us why. Gators made us fly. And we rock all the linen with the latest ties. Firm come first, obey your thirst. Nas and AZ all day it hurts. Obey your thirst, kid. I think together, Nas and AZ legacy together, because Nas kind of have his own legacy by himself, to be fair. So I'm going to say that I think that together, though, they represented a changing of the guard in hip hop. They set a new standard for what it sound like to be very lyrical and yet fly and swaggy, all of them words we use back in our day. Um, and I think that they had just set the bar for what rapid flow, lyricism in New York sounded as the G-Rap and Big Daddy era came to an end. And even though you had the puns and others who came up, I think, honestly, Pun and them were in a way kind of mastering the style that Nas and them had become more popular for in their generation. I think Raekwon come from that same cloth. Uh, of course, um, other guys. Jay-Z, to me, don't come from the exact same cloth, but I definitely love Hove, uh, Black Thought. I think all of them guys come from that same kind of space. But Nas and AZ together definitely reset what it meant to sound like crazy lyrical, um, fast paced rappers, but yet they weren't overly aggressive. Voices so smooth, never sound like they was trying too hard. And that kind of made it damn near arrogant. And that influenced me greatly. Um, if anyone who hear me rap long enough, y'all know that Nas and AZ and them guys influenced me. And I started to try to mimic some of the patterns I was hearing from them guys now. I mean, niggas can feel how they want. Nas and AZ ain't write my raps. I, so any lines you ever heard from me, I wrote them. But I would be lying. I think Nas said it best, and I'll end here uh, in that battle he had with Jay-Z. What's that record? Ether. That man said, I am the truest. Name a nigga that I ain't influenced. And I don't... If you come from New York between... Let's say 94 and 04. Don't lie. Nas influenced you, homie. In some way, even if you didn't take his style, he challenged you to be better with your pen. Ain't no gimmicks involved. Ain't none of that. Straight up real material. This is the music of life, and I die for this. So to everybody out there that listen to rap, keep it up. Stay strong. Don't let nobody misguide you. One love. Superior sword play. We do this the wrong way. <laughs> hey, yo, famous man. Think we gotta remind them, son. I see you think your bars heavy. To me, they like like I'm tossing confetti. My words are machete to your noodle. Your thoughts are spaghetti. Stop it already. What I aim at a target is deadly. The awesome marksman. Composure is calm and I'm steady. I'm talking to hip hop. When would this stop where you get props? Not for rap skills, but for big blocks. Make a popular clip for TikTok or get shot. Oh, your shit hot because you rock a big wristwatch. When did this become the litmus? Homie, I don't fit this. I'm just an average nigga. Supreme and exquisite with lyrics. You can easily see I'm pristine. Once your ear get to hear it Only pay 40 bills for my jeans Don't judge what I'm wearing Bars are top notch That's why ours is the top spot Why spend hours on guys who are not hot I don't got a foreign drop top of this MC And I got locked Proving every time that I rock I It's a and ever shy What you hearing is murk work Homie, you can't deny It's been clear since the first verse A lot of y'all would testify That when we disperse words Whoever think their competition Feelings are hurt worse It's a and ever shy What you hearing is murk work Homie, you can't deny it's been clear since the first verse. A lot of y'all would testify that when we disperse words, whoever think the competition.